Welcome to our second lesson on quadratic equations. Notice we're going to be solving quadratic equations. A quadratic equation is anything with an x squared in it. Okay, and same as usual, to solve means find all values of x that make x squared equals 25 true. Um, because we haven't really learned any methods to do this yet, um, I just want to I just want to think about um, what it means to solve this. So definitely, if I have x equals five that'll make this equation true. But notice that also if I have x equals negative 5, that'll also make it true. And we'll just check that at the bottom here. 5 squared equals 25 true. And negative 5 squared equals 25. Um, notice how much more useful our grade 11 definition is. There's no find x. There can be 2, 3, 4, 5 infinite number of solutions. In this case, there's 2. And there's usually going to be um, two solutions when we're solving quadratic equations. It's going to be 0, 1, or 2. OK, uh, let's cruise down to number 4. OK, and again in number 4, we need to find all values of x that are going to make that equation true. OK, notice we've got two things multiplied together here equaling 0. That means that if this guy equals 0, or if this guy equals 0, then the left side is going to equal 0, and our equation will be true. So we're left with either x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0. So x is going to equal 2, or x is going to equal negative 5. And let's just check those to make sure they're true. So I get 0 times 7 equals 0, which is true. And this one I get negative 7 times 0 equals 0, which is also true. Okay, and number 7, negative 2 is going to make the first set of brackets true. And if I put in 7, that'll make the second one true. And we'll just do a quick check. So we get 0 times negative 9 equals 0, true. This guy we get 9 times 0 equals 0, which is also true. OK, question 9. Um, notice that this guy isn't set up as two things multiplied together, but fortunately we spent all last lesson learning how to make it into two things multiplied together. So in this case, we need two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 10. So we'll end up with x plus 2 times x plus 5 equals 0, which means that x is going to have to equal negative 2 or negative 5. And remember, we always check in the original. Oops, that's plus 10, and that's true. And again, that guy's true. Okay, and here's our first example from the textbook. Um, notice, thing every, notice that every number in here is divisible by 2. And unlike yesterday, we have an equal sign, so I can just divide both sides by 2. I don't need to worry about factoring it out. So I get x squared plus 9 equals 6x. And now I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, so I have something I can factor. And now I need two numbers that add to negative 6 and multiply to 9. So I get x minus 3 times x minus 3. So x has to equal 3. And some people will say 3 or 3. I know that seems a bit weird, but it's because we have kind of two places that we get the 3 from. Either way, we only have to do one check. So let's throw 3 into our original. So 
So 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, so we get 18 plus 18 equals 12 times 3 is 36, and true. Okay, um, B is a really good example because I think a lot of people's first instinct is to say that 2x minus 3 has to equal 0 or x plus 1 has to equal 0, but that's not the case because if the left side equals 0, then we're going to be false because we'd end up with 0 equals 3. So basically we're going to have to rearrange this whole thing get everything on one side, and then we can use the fact that two things multiplied together equals zero helps us out. Okay, so let's first rainbow that guy all together. Okay, and subtract three from both sides, get everything on the same side. So I get 2x squared 2x minus 3x is minus x, and then minus 6 equals 0. And now we've got one side equal to 0. So I'm going to factor this guy. I don't have a common factor, so I'm going to have to put the legs on there. I need two numbers that or sorry, add to negative 1, multiply to negative 6. That's going to be negative 4 and 3. Have a look at our first group. Factor a 2x out of that. And we're going to factor 3 out of this guy. So if I throw the big brackets on, I'll pull an x minus 2 out, and I'll be left with 2x plus 3. So that means that either x minus 2 equals 0, which gives us x equals 2, or 2x plus 3 equals 0. Which gives us x equals negative 3 over 2. And of course we're going to work in fractions on our check, so we've got lots, lots of fraction practice for chapter 7. Okay, let's do our easy check first. Oops, there we go. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, times 3 equals 3. That guy's right. And now let's do our fraction check. So 2 times negative 3 over 2 is negative 3, so we'll have negative 6 here. And negative 3 over 2 plus 1. I'm just going to do it over here to save space. 1 is 2 over 2, so that's going to be negative a half. Negative 6 over negative 6 is the same as negative 6 over 1. And negative 6 over 2 is the same as negative 3 over 1. So negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 equals 3. So they both check out. So there's our two values of x that make the original equation true, our two solutions. Um, question B is ridiculously easy, but of course it makes everyone's brains explode because it looks a little bit different. Uh, first thing we can do is get rid of the common factor of 2, just dividing both sides by 2, so I get x squared equals 2x. And now if I'm going to factor, I need to have 0 on one side. So subtract 2x from both sides, so x squared minus 2x equals 0. And now, because I've only got two things, I've got a common factor of x in those. So I'm just going to pull out an x, and I end up with x minus 2. So x is either needs to be 0 or 2 to make the left side equal the right side. So let's plug those into the original. 2 times 0 squared equals 4 times 0. So if x equals 0, it makes it true. eight equals eight. So if x equals two, it also makes our original true. So there's our solution. Two values of x that make the original equation true. And if this was foundations 11, that would be the end of the lesson. But because it's pre-calculus, we're going to combine chapters two and three together. 
So we've got a radical equation. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get the radical on a side by itself, just like we did last unit. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to grab my black pen first. And add, oh, sorry, first thing I need to do is do my non-permissibles. So I get x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0, minus 3 from both sides. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now I can add 1 to both sides. I'm going to move way over here to the left. Now that I've got the radical by itself, I can square both sides. Remember that x plus 1 squared is the same as x plus 1 times x plus 1. That's why I end up with x squared plus 2x plus 1. And now I'm going to get everything on the same side. So I get 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. I need two numbers that add to 1 and multiply to negative 2. So 0 is going to equal x plus 2 times x minus 1. The two values of x that are going to make that true are 1 and negative 2. Okay, And now let's just make sure they make our original equation true. Oops, should be an equal sign there. So let's pop the 1 in here. That's a bit long. So 1 plus 3 is 4. Root of 4 is 2. Minus 1 equals 1. That's true. Let's try the negative 1. Or the negative 2, sorry. And I have negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 minus 1 equals negative 2. So we get 0 equals negative 2. That is not correct. So even though we didn't do anything wrong by getting this negative 2, it doesn't make our original equation true. That's called an extraneous possible solution. So it's a, a possible solution you get by going through all the algebra that doesn't turn out to be a solution. Okay, so because that's not true, negative 2 is not a solution. We only have one value of x that makes our original equation true. So our only solution is x equals 1. Okay, and now a little more pre-calculus fun. We've got the sum of a number, and the square of a number is 20. Determine the number. Okay, so first we'll define x as the number. So sum of a number and the square of a number. So the number, there's the square of the number, sum them, and that is 20. So I'll subtract 20 from both sides so we can factor this and write it in an order we're used to. x squared plus x minus 20 equals 0. Add to 1, multiply to negative 20. Gives us x plus 5, x minus 4. And if x equals negative 5 or 4, that will make the original true. Or, sorry, that will make this equation true. Let's make sure that it makes the original true. Oops, I got that in the wrong order. So negative 5 makes the original true. And so does 4. So the number could be negative 5 or 4. We don't know which. And now a little gardening question. So we've got a rectangular garden. There's our garden. And it's 5 meters by 7 meters. This is easy so far. When both dimensions are increased by the same length, the area of the garden increases by 45 meters squared. 
Okay, well, if they're going to increase by the same length, we can just use the same variable. So there's our increase of x, there's our bigger garden, and the increase is 45. So this area in here is 45 meters squared. Determine the dimensions of the larger garden. Okay, well I'm going to have 7 plus x times 5 plus x will equal the whole area. Before I can figure out the whole area, I need to figure out this 5 by 7 here is 35 meters squared. So the whole area is going to be 35 plus 45 is 80 meters squared. Okay, and again, the fact that this is factored already does us no good because um, the other side doesn't equal zero, so we're going to have to expand it or unfactor it. So we got 35 plus 12x plus x squared equals 80. Subtract 80 from both sides. Write it in an order we're used to, and we get x squared plus 12x minus, what's that, 45? equals 0. Okay, and now I need two numbers that add to 2 and multiply to negative 45. Or 12, sorry. Not 2, 12. That's better. So add to 12 and multiply to negative 45. And that will be x plus 15 and x minus 3 equals 0. So x is either going to have to equal 3 or a negative 15. Well, it said increase, so we're not increasing by negative 15. That makes no sense. So let's have a look and see what our dimensions would be if we increase by 3. 5 plus 3 would be 8 meters, and 7 plus 3 would be 10 meters, and that would give me 80 meters squared. So that's a good enough check there. If possible, checks in reality instead of in algebra. All right, and that's the end of the lesson. So yeah, basically you just need to factor when one side is 0, and then either this or this has to equal 0 to make the left side equal the right side. Make sure you check your possible solutions in the original. Um, the, if you did everything right, they'll always be true, unless you're doing a radicals question, in which case you may have extraneous possible solutions.